I first got into the occult in the early 80s. I mean, I had read about it earlier than that, but I started hanging out with people, etc. But it, his work, it, actually, I still have a VHS tape. I got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which I watched, I watched a hundred times, and thank God he's coming out with DVDs and it's online because I'm afraid the thing's gonna, you know, wear a hole in it. <laughs> but uh, very honored. He comes from a tradition of Solomonic magic, mm -hmm. and uh, he's with the Ordo Templi Astarte. He's the Ar Archimage of that order, and he's gonna actually do a better job on introducing himself. So I I'm not gonna take up any more time. Pope Runyon. introduce Brother Hercules or Heracles of the of the Austin Hermitage of the CHS OTA and that's John Sheffield and John Brother Omega John has something for you and we like to go ahead so if you want to take over John and uh, present that uh, we just wanted to say thank you from the Order of Temple of Astarte for setting this up and with how much we appreciate it and how like, awesome it is that everybody showed up, everybody. And uh, this is a painting. Wow. Uh, wow. Wow. That's gorgeous. The artist is uh, Kelly Irvin. Kelly Irvin, he's with the Order of Temple of Astarte. Exactly what you'll see this on our walls. Um, let me actually put this somewhere safe, though. No umbrellas. No umbrellas. Okay. Now I got you. How do you people actually want to summon spirits to? Visible appearance. How many? How many? How many magicians do we have out here? Oh, that's good. Well, Lon and I, Lon Duquette, used to put on. We haven't done it lately, but we, we may start up the the the, the Lon and Polk show. And what we would do is we'd go around <laughs> to, to um, various cult shops and we'd, we'd sign up and. And Lon would come on one week, and he would give you all the theory on this, and then the next week I'd come, and I'd say, okay, this is how you do it. So we call this the, the Lon and Polk Show. And so I don't have a lot of equipment, because you can't carry a lot of equipment on the plane. But what I am going to do is I'm going to deliver this standard paper we have on the subject of invocation and evocation. Don't take notes, you don't need to, because I think I have enough copies of this paper to give each of you when you go out. And if I run out of them, then you can, uh, then you can listen to it, because we have the same, the same talk on the Hermetic Hour. And the Hermetic Hour is, our, is our, our famous worldwide blog talk radio show. That has that is developed and produced by my 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 lovely lovely lady Lauren Freebody. Get up here, Lauren. Yeah. 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 And so anyway, thank. So anyway, uh, like I say, if, if if I run, if 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 you get out of here without a copy of this, just listen to it on the Hermetic Hour podcast and, and take notes there. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. All right. This is dark mirror evocation and angelic invocation. Yeah, it's a lecture by myself uh, at the, which was presented first at the uh, fraternity of uh, uh, Hidden Light Symposium, October fifth, two thousand two, at Fauché Lodge in uh, Culver City, and on the Hermetic Hour broadcast and been rerun on that. So this is a, this is our standard paper on, on the subject. Before we get into the meat of this discussion, please allow me to clarify a few points regarding the OTA's angelic invocation and spirit evocation techniques. These practices have nothing whatsoever to do with black magic or Satanism, and the way our system is structured, it could not even be misused for dark and sinister purposes without a serious 
possibility of a psychic backlash to anyone unwise enough to make such an attempt. Why is this so? Well, for the compelling reason that our, in our system, one's own reflection in a mirror is used as a start point for the conjuration of visible appearance in spirit evocation, a practice which the uninformed refer to as summoning demons. Of course, according to Lon, demons are our friends. A flight with the sylphs can be quite elemental, but demons are a guy's best friend. <laughs> 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 well, okay. Why is this so? Well, the compelling reason that I said. And um, it, it's a practice which the uninformed refer to some demon. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that trying to send a psychic component of your own personality, no matter how archetypal, off to hurt somebody else is analogous to lighting the fuse on a stick of dynamite and then wishing it would somehow fly out the window or sail all the way across town and blow up your enemy. Well, in this case, your enemy is yourself, and you are a lot closer to home. <laughs> now, Crowley, as you all remember from Crowley's forward in Goetia, Crowley laid this out. The, the spirits of the Goetia are portions. Crowley said portions of the human brain. He shouldn't have said that. He said portions, he should have said portions of the human mind. The brain is just the hardware, the mind is the software, so they're portions of the... But they are also larger, much, much larger. And, and the universal mind is made up of all of our minds, and these archetypes are in all of those minds. And so, here again, as Lon says, they are the heavy lifters. Remember, these are powerful, powerful spirits, and they extend a lot farther than just you. But you, if you use your own face, Distorted with me and reconstructed with the sigil. You don't want to go. You don't want to. You don't want to risk doing something unjust, doing something unjust and unworthy and unjustified with these spirits to somebody, because you, you are running a risk of getting hurt. Now, in this case, your enemy is yourself. Now, I'm not saying that these angel spirits elementals are in entirely individual or personal. On the contrary, we all share in a universal population of archetypes, shadow fragments, and even superior and inferior non-human sentient beings. Remember Dion Fortune tried to say, oh, it's all just human, and there's no, there are no enemies on the astral that aren't human. I don't think Dion Fortune was right about that. <laughs> and I'll, we'll, we'll go a little further than that. We'll go all the way out to the out into the universe, and there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff out there that's smarter and meaner than we are. Now, um, so we access the greater universe beyond through the lesser universe within. Now, I'm gonna, here again, I'm going to lean on Lon, as my esteemed colleague Maestro Lon Duquette puts it. It's all in your head, but you have no idea how big your head is. My lawn accent. <laughs> we sit down for a minute. And uh, this is on the as above, so below hermetic principle. I would remind those poorly informed critics who jump to the conclusion that our ceremonial magic, because of its dimly lighted setting, its exotic trappings, and its sonorous conjurations is therefore evil and sinister. It's no more evil and sinister than is Tibetan Tantric Buddhism, and certainly no more demonic than that venerable tradition. And if you've ever seen a black Malakali, you know what I'm talking about. And as in Tibetan Tantric practice, we master the rebellious spirits within ourselves on the path to spiritual enlightenment. The Tibetans have hundreds of gods, goddesses, and demons, and yet they are still Buddhists. Right? We have a pantheon of pre-biblical gods, goddesses, and demons, and yet we are still hermetic. 